Hello YouTube, EasygoingMC back with another Minecraft video. Today, we're going to be doing a tutorial on the automatic wheat farm you see right in front of you. So before we get into anything, I want to give credit to where credit's due. Crew Productions helped me. Um, he didn't really help me, but his video gave me a couple ideas for this farm. Uh, the mechanic of the villager harvesting the crops, and then the minecart picking up the crops, of course. Um, so that's where I got those ideas from, but everything else is my own ideas, including the redstone and the rail system, which are a lot simpler than his design, if I'd say so myself. But the way this farm works is, as you can, as you just saw, that farming villager harvested some wheat, so if we bone meal up some, artificially, you know, uh, we should see that he goes and will harvest that wheat at any point. And we filled, in this farming villager, what's special about it is it had an empty inventory, and then we filled it up with eight stacks of seeds. So that means it had a full inventory full of seeds, so it will never be able to pick up wheat. So as you can see, the wheat is left on the floor, and then he picks up some of the seeds, but if he has a full inventory, some of the seeds will also be left on the ground. Um, but then the wheat is picked up, and then the minecart, when it comes back after its long journey, will deposit it in these hoppers. Uh, with this my own minecart unlooting system right here. So as we can probably see in just one moment, this minecart's going to come in and unload its stuff. But this is quite a cheap design, as you can see in front of you. The hardest part they get is the 13 stacks of seeds that you're going to need. But as you can see, it deposits all the items in there, and you'll gradually gain more. And always one item is always left in there, but that, that doesn't really matter, because it will be left out when the minecart comes back. Um, so yeah, let's get into what you need for this farm. So the first thing you're going to need is five stacks and four dirt, five stacks and four of any block of your choice, then two stacks and 24. I prefer glass, but you can also use any block you want, but I think glass looks the nicest. So that way you can make your, sure your villager's in there and still doing his job. Um, you're also going to need about a half a stack of lighting blocks, four wooden trap doors. Um, you also need about five and four plus two, so five stacks and six rails. However, um, you will need some power rails, but I'll be using all powered rails in this instance. And then you'll also need levers to power said powered rails. However, in this tutorial, I'll be using redstone blocks for simplicity's sake. Uh, but you would just go underneath, and I'll show you that later. So then you need three hoppers, two redstone dust, one redstone torch, and one comparator. That's pretty much all the redstone required. Uh, 16 probably less blocks to do the required redstone, a hopper minecart, four water sources, four lily pads, a farming villager, so a fletcher, fisherman, farmer, or a shepherd, I believe, are the four you could use. And then also you need about six stacks of slabs, depending on where you build this. Actually, you'll need a little bit more. You'll need like 10 stacks of slabs. I do apologize for that. Um, but that does depend on where you build it, which I'll get into right now. So here's where you should build this farm. You want to build it, you have to build it at least 80 blocks away from a village. So that includes iron farms or any naturally spawned village. Uh, otherwise, the villager AI won't work correctly and the farm will be very, very inefficient. Um, so the next thing you should do is you should build this farm like 10 blocks off the ground. So this isn't required, but it's a, the easiest way to protect from lightning damage. Uh, otherwise, you'd have to build out like five or six blocks with this overhang, and I think this looks nicer than that. So it's on the ground here. However, this is just for like showcasing sakes, but I'd build this 10 blocks off the ground if I was doing it myself. Or you could build it in a hot biome like this, a desert, where you don't have to worry about lightning anyways. That's probably the best option. Then you wouldn't even need this overhang right here. So this farm is also stackable, which I'll get into at the end of the tutorial. Uh, also, if you want to see how I have stacked this farm, I built a version of it with slightly different redstone and minecarts, but overall the same design on the Prototech server. I have a video of that linked in the description. But let's get into the tutorial for just one layer. So I already went over what you need. So you want to start out with your stone bricks or your block of your choice. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to build 10 blocks off the ground. I'll build two blocks first demonstration and you want to build an 18 by 18 square so 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 so then what you want to do is you want to build it off in this direction too and then fill in that 18 by 18 square with block of your choice all right guys so as you can see you'll have an 18 by 18 uh, square of stone bricks or I'll just say stone bricks 
of uh, one layer thick. So what you want to do is in one corner, put two blocks like that, and then in this corner, place one block up like that. So that's some of your redstone, your 16 blocks right there. And then what you want to do is you want to get um, your rails now, and I forgot these, and you want to place it in a pattern like this. So start off, actually get rid of that block. Well, it's fine for now. Um, place a powered rail here, rail here, and then you want to go off in a pattern like this. So this can be normal rails alternating with power rails every so often, but I'll just be using powered rails for this demonstration. And what you want to do is you basically just want to wind it back and forth all the way until, of course, you get over here, and eventually you'll end up going down this way, and you'll just run it into like that, and then it'll go back and then back to the unloading station. So fill in your rails, power them with levers or redstone blocks. You can go underneath to power it with levers, but I'll be using redstone blocks for this tutorial. So as you can see, you'll be left with this winding pattern of rails going back and forth, back and forth, and ending at that block, and then it'll bounce back and come back, the minecart will, once you put it in. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to build up the rest of the structure of the farm, or the majority of it. And I'm sorry this is getting very unorganized, but we're saving time here. So what you want to do is you want to actually get your dirt. You're not going to use all of it just yet, just a little bit of it to mark out some spots. Uh, your wooden trap door, so you'll probably need some rails in case you lose some, and also some blocks. Though they've already placed them, you're just removing and putting them in a different spot slightly. So this is actually where all your dirt's going. So what you want to do is you want to go out... Um, four blocks from the corner, and then go in four blocks So from here. So one, two, three, four. So you should have like a, it should be like four blocks in each direction. So like it should be like relative to the corner. So you should have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this is where your water sources need to be, actually. So you don't have dirt there. Uh, so what you need to do is go below that, and where those rails are, you need to break the three like that and then you want to place your blocks like so uh, we can actually break that one so we can easily get in here and then what you want to do is you want to place a trap door on the top of that block like so and then you place your three rails so we'll have a lily pad here to prevent items there might be a couple losages it shouldn't be too much um, there could be a couple items that land on the lily pad but the mine card will still pick up blocks from these two. It would just be lost in the lily pad that will end up there. Unfortunately, though, I don't think it's worth all the extra redstone and confusion to solve that because it'd be like maybe two pieces of wheat every hour, if that. It probably wouldn't even be that much. Uh, but so you want to do now is you want to come down like eight blocks. I sort of didn't do that right, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I actually did do it right. This is where your next water is going to go. Uh, eight blocks away, and if you look at it, it should be four blocks away from each side once again. And you want to do the same thing. Um, place in your three blocks like so. Be a little difficult if you have some dirt there. Um, place in your three rails. Place in your trap door like that. Place your rail back, and then obviously fill it in. And you also want to place your water in in these spots as well. Oop. Uh, and I just did that, didn't I? But thankfully, that's why we have these set up because it doesn't actually really break it. As you can see, that was kind of a fail, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna re-record it guys. Don't worry. Um so what you do is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you go out again to this. It should be four blocks relative to each corner. Punch out these three blocks. Come down in here. Place those three um, powered rails, dirt, trapdoor, boom, you're done. And then come out two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Once again, should be four blocks relative to each side, like so, in the corner, like that. And then place in your three blocks right there, dirt. Trap door, break the dirt, place the rail back in, and then obviously place your water in like so. So what you want to do is you want to fill in this entire square, not these two blocks obviously, but fill in the entire square of dirt and then till it using a hoe.
Alright guys, congratulations, you've built up the most of the structure of the farm at this point. Um, as you can see, you should be left with something like this, with your water bucket spaced evenly, of course. And yeah, it should look like this underneath, in case anything was unclear in the last clip. But what this allows is the minecart can travel under and also pick up every single um, wheat, unless it lands in the lily pad, except that's fairly unlikely because it'd have to be in like one of these and that might be harvested once an hour and it's not even a guaranteed chance so it's a extremely minor loss i'm not even sure it's technically possible but this farm is decently efficient um so yeah let's get into the next step uh we're gonna now i'm just gonna clear my inventory um we're gonna get the glass so this obviously can be any block of your choice i pick glass because i think that looks a little better what you want to do is you just want to go a ring around like so. This is the best method. And then what you also want to do is after you've done that, get your get some of your stone slabs, place it on top like this, or your slabs, or a block really, and then place top half slabs like so over the interior of the farm. Like that. Um, and then we'll be back to put the lighting in in just one moment. And one thing you should also do in this step, I'm doing a lot of steps in once because I think this is the best way. Uh, all these steps are relatively easy. Plant a bunch of seeds. You'll need f uh, five stacks and four to do this. So unfortunately, you have to plant it before the farmer does. Otherwise, the farm could potentially break. So plant in your seeds as well. Then put the half slab roof on the glass. Or you can do it in any order you want, but that's what I would do. So once you've done that, well, continue to the next step. All right, for the next step, what you want to do is you want to go around and you want to punch holes sort of just randomly. You could you could figure it out, but I prefer just random. There's no point. The only thing you don't want to do is build in like these areas. So like the three little gaps around the lily pads. Otherwise, the villager could get stuck. But any everywhere else, you want to place light so you can ensure the crops don't pop off, as you saw down there, which is to demonstrate why these lights are necessary. So I do apologize if that happened in your own farm, but just pick up the seeds. It shouldn't be that bad, because if you have the glass in, which I hope you do, because I think it looks nice. Um, yeah, you'll want it. See, I just placed that, that. A villager could get stuck there, so you don't you don't want to place things like that. And we can fix this real quick. But yes, yeah, so you want to just kind of go around, randomly place some glowstone. Um, you'll know if you didn't place enough just because, yeah, crops will start popping off and things like that. And you just want to make sure, you know, you didn't place any too close. Like that one's a little too close. You can place it one block back potentially though. Uh, just don't, yeah, just make sure you, you cover all your grounds, place in a bunch of glowstone. That's what I was just doing. And then, obviously, if the crops popped off, what you can do is you can fill in all those seeds. It wasn't too bad. Uh, this is actually one of the worst I've ever seen. So, it's usually like five plants that pop off sometimes. But basically, what you want is just a sky level or block level above seven, as you can see. We're basically covered everywhere. And the reason why you want glowstone not touching is because if you had a glowstone block on top of this, you could fit through it, but a villager is actually slightly taller than the player. So, yeah, the villager actually gets stuck, unfortunately. So what we're going to do next is, before we do the cover on top, what we're going to do is we're going to do the redstone. So this is actually quite easy. This is really easy stuff. So you actually only need two hoppers, um, but you'll need more if you want a bigger output, of course. And you also will need, that's basically it, you'll need some blocks too. Um, so what you want to do is you want to place a block like here, place a block there, break these two blocks. Two hoppers. Of course, this can be your like output hopper if you wanted to, which is what I usually do, um, and run into a storage system or whatever. Then you want to place your powered rail back right there. What you want to do next is place a block there, comparator, block up like that, torch, two pieces of redstone dust. And that's all the redstone required for the farm. That's your unloading station done. Uh, really quite easy, to be honest. Uh, so now you can actually put your minecart in, and what you also can do is sometimes minecarts will stop when chunks unload, 
So if you're ever unloading the chunks, that will actually turn the farm off. Uh, the villager will continue harvesting, however, that's going to turn the farm off, for the minecart at least. Um, which I suggest doing if you're on a server where it's especially laggy. So the next thing you want to do is you want to get your 8 stacks of seeds, plus a couple extra just to test something. Um, and then you'll need your farming villager. So this will potentially take me even a long time, so let me, let me get myself some strength to kill the bad villagers. But we'll make a little platform out here. So what you want to do is you want to get yourself a farming villager. So we got lucky, and this was a farmer. So a farming villager, a brown coat, something that looks like that. This is also the new texture pack, but it will look similar in the old one, just in case you're wondering. Um, so as you can see, we have eight stacks of seeds. You want to just throw all of them at the farming villager, like that. And he should pick them all up, as you can see. And there shouldn't be any left if you throw even five more on the ground. Those should not be picked up. If you throw a wheat on the ground, most importantly, that shouldn't be picked up either. So that means his inventory is full. He should accept eight stacks. If he does, you're basically fine. The test is irrelevant. However, it's always good to test, right? Then you want to put the villager in the farm. Do this, however. You might have to break a hole. It might be hard. But, yeah, it shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad, right? So just, you know, just shove him in there. You know how villagers are. And there you go. Villagers inside and locked and loaded. Uh, what you can do is you could also break one of the seeds and he'll pathfind towards it. And that'll make it easy for you, actually. And this is actually off right now, so we'll turn that back on. But yeah, that's basically the farm done. Now what you can do, which this is optional, um, if you built this in a desert, you're done. It's okay. Uh, if you built this in like a biome where there's no weather. However, if you didn't, you should build up three blocks. So one, two, three, and then put a half slab on top. And this will also mob proof it. And then just do like a canopy of half slabs around. And I am not going to do this on camera just because you can see it easily right there and it's not hard to do it all. You literally just fill in the square again. But that's what you would do if you were not in a biome without weather. So basically every biome you'd have to do this in. And that's to prevent the villager from being struck by lightning due to an un 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 unlikely lightning strike. And turning him into a witch and essentially breaking the farm. And then you'd have to put a new villager in there and it'd be a big hassle. And who wants to do that? But your farm is now complete. That's actually it, guys. This farm is now fully functional. You have to do nothing to maintain it unless the minecart stops because you unload chunks. Or the villager, for whatever reason, glitches out and despawns. But this farm is fully functional. Uh, how you can stack layers. So, the stack layers, you wouldn't want to build this canopy on. You don't want to just place your next dirt. Or you want to place your next rails, like, one block up from here. Like so, because you have your glowstone there and can't place rails, basically. So then, then you'd place your rails here and then rebuild the farm. So it's really quite easy to stack. You can see how I did that in the prototech video I linked down below. Uh, it's really quite easy. You could stack up all the way up the world limit from Y equals zero if you wanted. However, one of these produces enough wheat for my survival world. Now, I don't do a ton of trading. However, it produces definitely enough to get by. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to drop a like down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I put a lot of time and thought into this, such as the trap doors that are nice, nice touch and the unloading systems and things like that. And I think I made one of the simplest yet most effective designs out there. If you have any questions about some of the things I did in this tutorial, don't hesitate to ask down in the comments down below. I'll probably reply within the hour, which I usually do unless it's when I'm sleeping. So, yeah. Um, but other than that, that's going to do it, guys. Um, these are all the supplies you really need. Not too much at all. Just some blocks, a villager, and the seeds. The seeds and the village are honestly the hardest thing to get. And if you have a village and you have bone meal and stuff like that, it shouldn't be too hard. You could build this on the first day even if you really wanted to. I guess the rails are pretty expensive. However, it's not too bad. But yeah, I think this farm is excellent. I hope you did enjoy it. And I'm known for my famously long outros by my subscribers, probably. So I'll end it here. I hope you have an easygoing day, and I'll catch you all later. Bye bye Have an easygoing day, and hopefully you'll get a bunch of wheat and seeds from this farm.